talk about innovation, let's talk about your innovation. Let's talk about Shapeshift because what does it want to become at the moment is a medium of exchange of crypto assets. But you're building on top of that, fixing other mm, problems to be solved within the ecosystem. Yeah, technically Shapeshift is a market maker. Um, people think of us as an exchange, but basically you come to us if you have Bitcoin and you want to trade it for Ethereum or Litecoin for Dash, for example. And we built a way to do that much more safely and much more much more quickly than how it had been done before. We don't hold any customer funds, and uh, this is really important. And you know, most people are aware of the the Mt. Gox fiasco and the exchanges that have been hacked. Shapeshift is a system that actually protects consumers by building technology that allows them to do what they want to do without um, without holding high amounts of risk. And so they do that by initially putting ether in. Is this how it's powered? If I'm not, if I'm not using money and I'm not, I'm not actually needing to own the assets themselves. I'm somehow doing it virtually by you. Yeah, you can think of it like a vending machine. Instead of putting in a coin, you put in a crypto asset. Instead of giving out a candy bar, you get another crypto asset. Okay. Um, we hold an inventory of all these things, and so we sell them directly to the customers. What we don't do is hold an account with all the funds of all these people. So in that way, we're very different than a traditional exchange. And I've got to ask you about Shapeshift because you've raised money. You've made money from significant players within the space, Lakestar, Pantera, Blockchain Capital. You may raise 10 million in what was your Series A. Why did you decide to sell equity? Why did you go for money? Why didn't you do an ICO, as it's called, initial coin offering? Yeah. Um, I mean, largely, we put that round together back in the fall of 2016. And we wanted to bring in some more institutional expertise we wanted to have a formal board with like, you know, people that knew what they were doing that had built businesses because that will help us build our own. Um, ICOs are, are great for raising a lot of money quickly, but you don't get the expertise of the people that you're mm -hmm. partnering with. So that was a large part of it. And also a large part of it was ICOs had not become nearly as popular when we were actually putting that together. Um, and when did you do one next? Well, I mean, I, I won't say we haven't thought of it, but it's uh, in the U.S. at least, it's really problematic from a regulatory perspective because the SEC has not been clear on which tokens are securities and which are not. And they have claimed that they are clear about it, but you go to any of the major law firms in the U.S. and ask them to do a legal analysis of a token, whether it's a security or not, and they will not even be able to do the review. They refuse to even do the analysis. So the SEC has cast a huge... Um, a huge pall over the whole industry and no one really knows where they're going to draw that line and it's it's something that has to get fixed it's kept so he brings up some light on how our government regulations are not working as well because once again this is a major issue maybe this is why crypto prices are falling is the unclear regulation from the sec and hopefully they'll address it on another note that I'd like to bring up is this is great for future exchanges because I also don't like the idea and this is why I have my wallets all over the place because um, when you do set up an exchange like a Coinbase, Gemini, GDAX, uh, Robinhood, um, you know, you're trusting them to basically maintain your crypto assets and that's why I highly recommend if you have more than like 5,000 that you just have multiple accounts and multiple uh, exchanges because if one is hacked, you know, they're not going to hopefully take out all, you know, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. And um, this kind of future technology where it just allows you to basically you store your own crypto. And if you want to exchange for another crypto, it's done instantaneously and you don't have to worry about them taking care of the custody. I think it's great. Um, and maybe like a hybrid model, because like I said, for some of my crypto assets, I do want to keep and I want to have complete control. But for me too, I don't mind having some of it managed by someone else, especially if you have, if I have large sums of money, um, let's just make up a hypothetical amount. If I have a hundred thousand dollars of crypto, maybe I would keep 50,000 myself and then maybe keep another 50 just actively managed by someone else just for protection. And if something happens to the 50,000 that I have, at least the other person, that's why I really like diversification. And if you do have, time, please definitely uh, subscribe to the channel, check out some of my previous videos and kind of go into more detail about that. But let me know your thoughts on this and I will talk to you soon.